In this video, we're going to be talking about the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. This is a nucleophilic substitution reaction, kind of like SN1 or SN2, just with way more restrictions on it. It's uh, obviously being done on an aromatic ring, so we'll abbreviate this sometimes. We will call this the SNAR reaction for substitution nucleophilic aromatic. There are two different versions of the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. For both of these versions, the leaving group on the molecule is a halogen. So I'm putting an X here specifically. The leaving group has to be a halogen, has to be a really good leaving group. Also notice that there is a nitro group on both of these different examples that is a requirement for this reaction. You need to have a nitro group that is either para to the halogen or ortho to the halogen, one or the other. If you have a nitro group in the meta position, the reaction isn't gonna work. There are uh, a lot of restrictions in terms of what works as a nucleophile for this reaction. And in fact, uh, we can only use hydroxide or alkoxides, OR minus like OCH3 or OET minus, something like that. Let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. The mechanism is gonna help us understand the requirement of the nitro group in particular positions. For this example, I'm gonna be using bromine as the halogen and I'm gonna have my nitro group in the para position. And I have the nitro group bonds all drawn out because that's gonna be important as we start drawing this mechanism. So this it starts off kind of like an SN2 reaction. The a nucleophile attacks the carbon with the leaving group. However, it does not continue. So the leaving group doesn't just fall off. That would be too easy. Um, the carbon, carbon double bonds move out of the way to make room for this incoming nucleophile. So when the nucleophile attacks and we've got our nucleophile OH up here, the bromine is still on the ring. The leaving group hasn't fallen off yet. And the carbon-carbon pi electrons associated with the carbon that just got attacked, they are gonna move out of that double bond and on to the carbon atom as a lone pair. So we get this intermediate right here. And I'm gonna continue drawing the nitro group out like that. So what happens next is a whole bunch of resonance structures. It's pretty similar to the sigma, com sigma complex intermediate in the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, where what we're doing now is just going to delocalize this negative charge around the ring. So our next step will be to move the electrons into this carbon-carbon bond to form a double bond in this position. And in order to do that, we have to get these electrons out of the way. And we're gonna do that by moving them down onto this carbon right here. And so that will give us, we still have both the leaving group and the nucleophile on the carbon. We now have a couple of double bonds in positions like that. Our lone pair is on that carbon, which still has the nitro group, negative, uh, negative charge on the carbon with the lone pair, and the nitro group has a positive and negative charge as well. At this point, we're gonna take a little bit of a break from moving the electrons around the ring, and we're gonna delocalize the electrons out into the nitro group which is something that we have seen before, or seen, we have seen the concept of delocalizing out into the nitro groups before. So we're gonna move that lone pair of electrons into the carbon-nitrogen bond to make a double bond in this position. And in order to do that, we've gotta get these nitrogen-oxygen electrons out of the way. So we still have the leaving group on the molecule. We now have a carbon-nitrogen double bond. We have two single bonds to the oxygen atom, still have a positive formal charge on the nitrogen. Here's this intermediate. And then we are now um, going to finish this resonance structure off by moving those carbon-nitrogen electrons into the ring, moving the a double bond from this right here. We're gonna move that up onto this carbon atom right here. And this is gonna give us our fourth and final resonance structure. 
still have the leaving group attached. Now we have a negative charge in the ortho position. We, our double bonds are back into the ring. This is gonna be the last time we draw the nitro group out in full. We won't need to draw it out anymore. So there's the, all of our resonance structures for our intermediate. And again, the resonance structures are just showing us how, um, you know, how the negative charge gets delocalized and it helps us understand how this mechanism is even possible. So the next thing that happens is the lone pair of electrons come back into the ring to return aromaticity and the leaving group is removed. That bond breaks. And so that is going to give us um, what we would expect, you know, with our leaving group being replaced by the hydroxide and we don't need to draw the nitro group out anymore. So I'm just gonna write NO2. Now, um, we've got a couple of things to talk about. So first thing I wanna talk about, if we had been using an OR group as our nucleophile, this would be the end of the reaction right here. So the reaction would be done. When we are using um, a strong, when we are using hydroxide, we have a deprotonation. I'm gonna draw this little hydrogen out here. When we're using hydroxide as our nucleophile, that hydroxide ion, because we're gonna have excess, it's gonna come in and deprotonate our product and temporarily give us this little guy right here, which we don't want. So when we're using water as our nucleophile, we're always going to need to follow this up with a step two with some acid that will just put that proton back on, give us the product that we're looking for. So again, if, if our nucleophile up here would be hydroxide, it would be a step one, and then we would need to have a step two H3O plus. And this is not gonna be the case if we're using OR minus, because if we had OR minus our product out here, there wouldn't be a proton to get deprotonated, so the reaction would just end at that point. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the presence of the nitro group and this rule that the nitro group needs to be either para or ortho to the, to the leaving group, to the halogen. The reason for that is that the fourth resonance structure, which we drew right here, um, delocalizing the electrons out into the nitro group is only possible when the nitro group is in the ortho position or the para position the electrons and the negative charge will end up in the ortho position twice in this um, set of resonance structures, and they'll also end up in the para position right here, and that gives them the opportunity to either spread out from the ortho position or spread out from the para position, but the electrons, the lone pair of electrons, never at any time end up on a meta carbon, which means that a nitro group in a meta position would be useless in terms of helping to stabilize this reaction.